Hello student, good morning and uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, previously, we already um, talked about how to calculate the acceleration and the speed depending by using especially the ticker time graph. So ticker time graph, uh, again, one thing that you should know is uh, from one dot to one dot usually is 0 0.02. So it is easier to just uh, remember this and do usually la I, I doubt that the question will ask 0 0.01 because the question sometimes won't give you this 0 0.02 they will just give you probably uh, 50 hertz which mean 50 tick in one second so you need to divide yourself so you need to use like 1 divided by 50 you get 0 0.02 so in case you want to skip that step, you might want to just remember one dot is 0 0.02 second. Free fall, okay, we already talked about it. Motion graph of object experience, free fall. Okay, so let's study the free fall. Okay, so this one we can see is 0 and the velocity will increase as it the ball fall down. So we can see the velocity graph. Before being released is 0, after that it will become faster and faster correct or not let's say here is 10 let's say here is 20 i don't know so the further the ball drop the faster the speed it will gain as it inc as it uh, get its momentum okay so we can see there's uh, the gradient show the acceleration i mean i won't say the gradient show the acceleration unless I look at this the time and velocity so velocity you need to know a bit of max lah huh? velocity minus velocity divided by time you get velocity that is why they say acceleration or oh, that is why they say gradient velocity kind graph uh, you can memorize it if you want but I prefer to understand easier because if you understand not only is easier for you to do because you don't need to memorize and you understand the concept better the reason they say gradient because it is uh, velocity divided by time you get acceleration and let's say if I put here uh, time okay so let's say if I do a graph at here and I put here time yeah time and here I put uh, here I usually mean let's say uh, uh, displacement or distance let's say like put distance or displacement so let's say displacement and I put the gradient so what does the gradient mean so the gradient will be yeah so for this graph if you look at the gradient so what does this gradient mean so if you assume that it's distance divided by time you will get uh, speed then you are correct if you say it's speed so depending on uh, distance divided by time you get the speed of course and then let's say if I draw this graph this is the time and this is the one more is what velocity for example oh this one already do so it's the acceleration speed so basically there's only two la, two unless there's other so you get one more is oh and, and another one is how to get the area in terms of the distance so this one is the area that it already travel yeah correct okay so because how i know because i use the speed time times i get the area make sense so the bigger the area the bigger the distance um, how I know because it's velocity times time and one more way to do it is you can see the unit ms negative 1 this one is s so in case you forget the formula m ms negative 1 is m over s time s so you cut cut you get m which the distance so eventually even if you don't know the formula you by looking at the unit you can do the the thing so it's easier to understand the concept 
I I mean I think it's better to understand the concept rather than memorize. Again, I recap my because I I I get many students confused about this thing. So I I I I say again and again. Okay, velocity time graph. If you understand the concept, the gradient I already explained. So I'm not going to explain again. The gradient it shows the acceleration, where velocity by time. For distance time graph, the gradient is the speed because distance divided by the time. For this one, the area will be velocity times times, which you get distance. And this one, if you use distance times time, you won't get anything. Yeah, you you won't get anything. Distance times time. Yeah, you you won't get a, you won't get anything for distance times time because it, it doesn't make sense, right? Ten kilo. If usually we use distance divided by time rather than distance times time. So, so usually question won't ask, but I just think in my brain whether is there something that might appear, but. There's nothing appearing. Okay, yeah. So I hope that you understand. Uh, again, in case some of you don't know, I just want to do a quick recap. Speed and acceleration. Speed is how fast the thing go from point A to point B, and acceleration is how fast it can go in the time. The increase of speed. Okay. So acceleration is the increase of speed. Speed is how fast the thing can go. Uh, I but this one is in previous video, uh, so so I, I cannot explain it. Okay, so you might if you don't understand this, please check out the previous video. Okay, distance time graph, and sometimes we can see there is a gradient. Uh, I mean the gradient is not constant, proportional. It's not a straight line. So at here we can see that the gradient is a straight line. It means that it's a same speed throughout the graph. Let's say here is ten divided by ten. 10, 10, I will get 1. Let's say I, I put 20. Okay. Uh, and then I put 10, 10. Let's say 10 divided by 10, I get 1. Because this is a straight line. So if I put here 20, I will get 20. So 20 divided by 20, I still get 1. So eventually, this shows it is a constant speed. Means the speed don't increase. So the acceleration is 0. Hope you understand that uh, why acceleration is zero because speed divided by time. So since there is no increase in speed, so it will be zero dividing by no matter what time you still get zero. However, for the gradient, we can see this one is less steep. Correct or not? From here, we can see it's a less steep. Here is more steep. Or or the gradient will be higher so here will be slower a bit is it slower yeah slower a bit here will be faster because the graph increase in terms of gradient how to do this uh, if you don't believe me I wonder there's a there is a question or not maybe i can create my own question assuming this is one one two uh i i try now but but I, four five six one two three uh uh this one is wow so difficult to draw on uh, here probably i put uh One, two, three, four, five. So let us let's count the acceleration for A and the acceleration for B. So for A, acceleration equals to V minus U over T. Okay. So the V minus U over T. Uh, the displacement. Okay. So uh never mind lah. Actually I see wrong. I thought it's speed time graph. See even I made the mistake. So, uh, I mean, if I made a mistake, everyone made a mistake. I mean, or I mean, student made a mistake. Also, so uh, anyway, be, uh, because it's displacement time graph, um, I don't want to go too deep into it. But we can see A is slower, B is faster. Probably because, uh, from the graph, we can see that for two second, it only move until here. So here is only two second. It move for let's say two meter. Two second it move for two meter. And let's say here is which is smaller is one second. 
So in one second, and it moved again for two meter. So which one is faster? So we, of course we say that B is faster because A you can see here in two second they move one meter. Two second move one meter. And for B, in one second, it moved two meter. So the, the speed is two divided by one, you get uh, two ms negative one. Uh, sorry, one divided by two, you get 0 0.5 meter per second. And this one, two divided by one, you get two meter per second. But of course, depending on the question, whether the question want to ask us to count it or not, uh, um, since the question didn't ask, but what I want to bring out is the gradient. The, the steeper the gradient, it means the faster it will go. Um, uh, they are depending on from the graph, we can, let's say the question asks you to explain, then I can explain because here is one second that use two meters. So I will divide it at the A, the speed is actually two divided by one is two ms per second. And I explain it again for the point A, it is slower because the gradient is less steep. As we can see in point A, I use 2 meter divided by, here is what, or oh, 1 meter, sorry, displacement is 1 meter. 1 meter divided by 2 second, I will get uh, 0 0.5 meter per second. So we can conclude that point A is 2 meter per second, which is faster than point A, 0 0.5 meter per second. This is how you explain in case the question asks you. Okay, I hope I can. I hope you understand the concept so that you can explain rather than memorize. Uh, because I know some students, they like to memorize. But, but when, when you memorize, when the question turn a bit, then you cannot answer. So it's even more important to understand the concept. It's important to understand the graph. And it is important to able to explain the graph properly. Like what I did just now. Uh, because we are studying science, we are not studying math mathematics. Hey, just get the answer. Okay, finish. Or English, we write an essay. Finish. We are studying science, especially when we see a table of a graph, we want to able to explain it clearly what the graph really mean. If not, then what's the point of the graph? Correct or not? When you go to university, when you, when you go out to work or you study business, the graph shows something and we need to explain every properly and we want to make sure the graph is correct. Okay, motion graph of object. Okay, let's look at this force and motion was shared in a linear graph that move against gravity. Okay, velocity in gravity will absorb throw upward. So it will throw upward and later it will come down. So they call it the maximum displacement as it will go. As the, the maximum displacement, <coughs> they say that the velocity is zero. So if I can say that if I throw a ball, if I throw a ball, a ball upwards, when it reaches the maximum displacement, the velocity is zero. Get, you get what I mean? <clears throat> I repeat the statement. If I throw the ball upward, when it reaches the maximum displacement, I'm not saying displacement, I'm saying maximum displacement, the velocity is equal to zero. I hope you understand this. Uh, because when I throw ball, eventually the ball will start. stop first before they come down. The ball will stop at 0 0.0000000000000001 second. During the 0 0.0001 second, it will stop. Okay? So that's why. That's why it says zero. <coughs> velocity time graph. Ah, why we always look at this picture so many times already? Okay, so again, there's nothing much to see because I already explained many times. Okay, so this is start with very fast, then it goes to zero. So eventually it will stop. Yeah, it will stop because velocity go to zero means you need to stop. 
because it's zero ms zero ms negative one for example let's say here is 10 10 ms negative one and zero ms negative one the gradient again i already explained many times gradient equals to velocity divided by time is equal to the acceleration the the area is velocity times times equals to the distance so from this graph i can get the distance i can get the acceleration okay you get what i mean i already explained it displacement time graph <clears throat> almost the same thing so we can see that the displacement is from zero to higher so i would say that the speed here is fast or slow fast or slow and according to the speed here so the speed here will be faster and the speed here will be slower but it still move unless it stop this call maybe it stop assuming i throw up well uh, because this one can be a bus it can be a, a train that stop also so but let's say i throw the ball up, upward so when i throw the ball upward <coughs> yeah so eventually it will stop because of uh the the displacement is oh yeah this is the displacement so the the, the even the ball stop the displacement won't, won't be zero because the ball already go up so it's impossible for the ball to be zero unless it's, it teleport back down the world. So, so I cannot do that already. Okay, let's use another example. Uh, anyway, fast. Let's say this is a bus, okay? Travel, travel, then it slow down. Then let's say this thing, it come down. Okay, so maybe the bus reverse. Slow, slowly reverse, faster reverse, stop zero distance i mean zero displacement okay let me think am i correct this is fast right displacement yeah correct displacement increase more than the time this one the in increasement de increase little bit in a lesser time so here will be fast here will be slow okay um, experiment to study object to free fall and non free fall. So, this one I already do this in a vacuum. So, of course, in a vacuum, free fall is standard, which is equivalent to the gravity. I think it's 10 ms negative 1. The, the, the gravity. So, we already look at the previous video we already looked at okay so we are not going to do that it's the same thing okay present of air time taken uh and then you need to write let's say here depending on what experiment you want to do like maybe here you put paper here you put ping pong let's say here you put bowling ball and you say or paper clip so you can uh analyze that eventually if there's no air resistance there will be uh, the, the speed to fall down is the same. Galileo Galilei carried an experiment. He dropped two speed of different mass simultaneously from leaning down pizza. He found the object of different mass take almost the same time to reach the ground. This uh, Galileo Galilei, in case you don't know him. So he go, oh, but I don't know he go to Pisa Tower actually, leaning tower of Pisa. Maybe one day we can visit it. Maybe I think maybe at Italy. Uh, I, he's the one that say the earth is rotating the sun. Last time people say the sun move around the earth. But he say even without a computer, he noticed that it is the earth that move around the sun and people are very angry i think that time is the the church in power the catholic church is in power then they they angry at him i tell you ah uh, simply teach people wrong thing so they put him into jail until he die um, but it's not a real jail it's a house jail I mean he stay in his house until he die because he say that the earth move around the sun and not the sun move around the earth so so this is a very good 
scientist uh, experiment. How he knows? Sometimes I wonder, you know. So I wonder how he can know that it is the sun that move around the earth. Eh, hey, sun that move around the earth. The earth that move around the sun and not the sun that move around the earth. So what he do is he use uh, telescope. He use telescope and he look at the star and he draw a map. I don't know how he do it, but he draw the map and by from the map and from the star, he found out the coordinate around the, I mean, he roughly figured out the coordinate for the earth and the coordinate of the sun. So truly a genius by looking at the star and draw it out you can find the coordinate of the earth and after that and coordinate of the sun after that you figure out that actually is the earth that move and not the sun that move a uh, very smart guy but go to jail because you you say this thing so yep uh this question should we maybe very fast we can do a few questions just a quick recap Free fall is the motion of an absorbed fall due to gravity force. Gravity force. And okay, the non free fall motion of an object is affected by air resistance. The answer is yeah, yeah, yes, air resistance. So the, the thing that blocks the thing from falling very fast. Maybe it's the air, the atmosphere, which only happen if you, there is something air resistant. But if you go to space, the speed is the same. If you move, then you move. I'm not affected by gravity. Like I, I'm not, I, I, I cannot say in space. Because in space, there is no gravity. Later, you think, why the space can move? Yeah, there is no gravity. And... So I say vacuum is better, okay? So, but it's in vacuum, then the speed is not affected by air resistance. Is the acceleration due to the gravity force acting on an adjunct? Uh, is the acceleration due, what is this answer? Is the acceleration due to gravitational force on the object? It's an acceleration. Oh, gravity acceleration, wow. This is so difficult. Gravity acceleration. The graph show free fall to do, do displacement. Okay, no issue. Ah, where's the question? No, this one. Oh, explain the graph. You see? Ah, I thought the question won't ask. Now the question asks us to explain. So this is the K by question. Okay, K by K by K by question. Explain the graph below show the free fall. Uh, I will say that at the beginning, the ball start at zero. The ball start at zero. As it moves, it has a very slow speed because the gradient is very small. After a while, the object move very fast because the gradient is very steep or have a high velocity does it sorry explain three point already okay start from zero after that i say that it moves slow because of the gradient is slow after some time it moves faster because the gradient is steeper okay or the gradient is higher Okay, so you can use any word lah. Huh? You don't memorize the answer. How to memorize the answer? Because you need to explain the graph. So you need to understand the concept. So you can use any word. Because if you see the marking scheme, they, even, they didn't even say the gradient is steeper or the gradient is lower. But, but you can use your own word. So I still give it correct because the student understand the concept. Mass and inertia. Okay, moving on, let's look at a bit about mass and inertia. Uh, uh, what do you mean by mass and inertia? Inertia, the bigger the mass, the higher the inertia. 
for example like i would say the bus or the lorry has the higher inertia what is inertia is the natural tendency to resist the change of its original state in terms maybe probably of force either is at rest or motion that is inertia the bigger the mass the bigger the inertia for example if i take a car i press the brake the car will stop which you know the car will stop okay but if i take a lorry and i press the brake the lorry is very difficult to stop the car is easier to stop the lorry is even to stop and how about me if i run let's say i run uh let's say three ten meter let's say same speed lah. me run the car move and the lorry move suddenly all of us stop who can stop faster of course it's me i can stop faster than the car after i stop the car stop and assuming all is the same speed and then after the car stop only the lorry can stop and after the lorry can stop only the train can stop so the train is the most difficult to stop train and airplane is one of the most difficult thing to stop because of the mass is high the inertia is high so the higher the object the higher the inertia that is why when we when lorry drives sometimes say, oh, when you drive the lorry like that or the bus bus and lorry should drive it slowly because the inertia is very high and it's difficult to brake compared to car so car you can turn left turn right turn left turn right or, or it's also okay i mean okay a bit lah huh? as compared to lorry and bus you turn left turn right turn right then you cannot brake you know because you got very high inertia then when you cannot brake you will hit someone somebody and it will cause accident or even death so because inertia means you want to resist the change it's difficult to move and also it is difficult to stop the higher the mass i, I can say like this the higher the mass the more difficult a exact to move and also more difficult for the object to stop but this is not like the science term so let's change it to the science term the bigger the inertia the higher uh, the bigger the mass the higher the inertia the lower the mass the lower the inertia what is inertia is the natural tendency of an object to resist the change of its original state whether it's at rest or motion rest means don't move so resist the change from not moving or moving anyway it's just a term lah huh? means difficult to move difficult to stop okay so that is the the easier term but you don't like that that uh, you write in the proper sentence like okay to resist is uh natural tendency to resist any change of original state from at rest or motion okay so it, it sounds better like that so inertia is not a physical quantity therefore cannot be measured it has no unit among involved in it. so let's look at the example uh original when you pull the coin will stop first then only the coin fall down due to its gravity um, but not so obvious lah, huh? because because the coin will fall down very fast if you put something bigger than if you put something bigger than it more difficult to stop uh, i mean yeah the bigger the mass the the more the more resistant the higher the inertia more resistant for it so we can do experiment maybe we take a coin then maybe we take a bag a school bag um yeah so we see how fast the thing drop but it's quite difficult to see lah huh? because the thing will still drop fast or or to to resist the change let's say for this guy let's say the <laughs> The question will ask you explain explain the figure 11.28 in terms of mass and inertia format the exam can ask you so
so I don't know whether the teacher love you or not then the teacher will just give you this question explain figure 11.2a in terms of mass and inertia so you need to explain or oh, because the bus stop lah the bus stop then the person go front uh, like that fall down lor. no you don't say like that okay because it is science so we want to say in the side the question in terms of mass and inertia so when the train moves, the passenger will move forward together with the train when the train stops suddenly the body of the passenger maintains a forward motion inertia of the passenger maintains the original state of the passenger that is being in motion does the passenger continue his forward motion wow no you need to answer like this uh, make it easy uh. i try to answer to explain it in easier maybe i say uh, when the bus move the mass of the car and the the mass of the bus and the mass of the person is it is it is in a state of a motion however when the bus press its brake properly there is inertia in the human so in the the inertia in the head in the human means that the person will fall in front even though the bus has Stop because the human got the inertia with of the tendency to move forward so when the bus stop the 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 person will move forward because it try to has it has inertia and it re has the tendency to resist the motion to stop something like that like this might say also very difficult eh? so that's why you understand the concept you use your own word okay because i i don't know how to <laughs> explain it in easier term eh? the exam question ask okay so uh if no question we are going to take a short break and i see you back at nine o'clock okay 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 see you nine o'clock bye